your boy Joseph on the track. Let's go. I put the city on top of my back. And it went way, way, way up. Like the D line, I just go for my set. Better be having they weighed up. We the ones turning it up to the mix. All that hate came days up. Cause we went way, way, way up. Never just way, way, way. That song makes it feel like Friday night. Hello and welcome to week two of Friday Football Fever. I'm Jeff Jones and tonight the non-district schedule marches on. Our game of the week was one of the highest scoring games of the season last year. Well, tonight beat it. In that matchup last year, Hutto beat Liberty Hill and the teams combined for exactly 105 points. Week one was very different for these two squads. Hutto pulled off a 31 point win and Liberty Hill fell in a 32 point loss. So what did they learn in each of their season openers? Oh, we learned a lot from week one. Uh, you know, we I, I didn't have the kids prepared to play week one, and that's on me. Even though we had some penalties and got us behind the chains, we were still able to convert, get first downs, and march down the field and score. We can't wait till second quarter to start flipping that switch that we need got to be mean in the trenches. On the defense and offensive line, we're a lot more physical than what we were last year, a little bit bigger. And so uh, just really excited about seeing that uh, progress as the year goes on. We're trying to put week one behind us and, and move forward, but uh, still got a lot to learn. The week, now these teams put up a ton of points last year, and they put up a killer ton this season. Huddles Will Hammond, known for his arm, but he can move the soap, the shake, the extra rinse, and the spin cycle will cleaned up on that play. And then it was Noah Long, and this guy, he's trying to break some records this year. He scored four touchdowns in the first half alone. But just before halftime, check this out. Time to go back to the tool shed and pull out your hook and your ladder. The completion to Alex Green, then the lateral to Keelan Chavis. A great play in the corner of the end zone. Chavis finds it just before the half. That play narrowed the Panthers' lead, but that Liberty Hill ground game was just too much. The Panthers are up in this one, 61 to 44 in the third quarter. Now we actually have my friend Corey Mose, and he just told me that that one has moved to the fourth quarter and he is watching the game from the sideline. When it ends, we're gonna try to get him live with some post game reaction. But for right now, we're gonna move on. And tonight was Liberty Hill's second game of the season. Their first was a tough loss to San Antonio Wagner. The same San Antonio Wagner that Dripping Springs traveled to play tonight. Dripping looking for win number one on the season and a little revenge on behalf of all of Central Texas. Jack Tindall, kid can squat 530 pounds. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my Twitter page at Jeff Jones Sports. Right now, the video is up there. Jack showed some of that strength at the goal line. Then quarterback Max Maher rolling to his left, got the shoulders turned and found Kyle Cook in the corner. Mr. Cook roasting, grilling, chefing, and winning. Drip takes it 35 to 14, the final. Cedar Park and Vandegrift, a battle of the old and the new. The Timberwolves showing off some brand new uniforms. The Vipers showing off their same old playmaker. Every time we saw these guys play last season, Miles Coleman was ripping off long touchdowns. Well, at least he's consistent. Two scores from over 60 yards out. Eli Adams, the quarterback who's going to Louisville, threw both of those. Vandegrift is up in this one, 34 to 17 in the fourth. Hey, to the scoreboard for the first time tonight, San Antonio cornerstone behind Maynard. That one uh, in the second half, 27 to 26. Maynard's on top by one. Dripping Springs, as we showed you a moment ago, actually beat Wagner. Uh, they get win number one on the season. More scores coming your way right now. Elgin leads Akins 41 to zero in the third. And Glenn had a tough start to the season uh, last week, but it looks like they're getting back on track. They are up on Victoria West, 52 to 14 in the fourth. More highlights coming your way. Georgetown hoping to turn a corner against Vista Ridge. Now the word Vista means a nice view and Rangers senior just signed Gaines. Sure did have a Vista of what the offense was trying to do. He got the pick on D then turned around a few moments later and found the end zone on offense. Great job by him. Hey, but why settle for a one score lead when you can go up by two? Tian Murray on the receiving end of a very long touchdown pass. Vista Ridge Enjoying the nice view of the scoreboard. Rangers win this one, 28 to 17. More scores coming your way. Eastview up on Copper's Cove by two scores, 33 to 21 in the third quarter there. Lehman doesn't look like, look like they're getting a win. They came from south to the central part of our city and McCallum, the Knights are on top 24 to seven. All day, every day, 24 seven right there. Lockhart, the Lions on top of Connolly, 38 to 21 in the fourth. And Mason, 
Hey, the punchers beat Brady 41 to seven, and it is a good night for that because they celebrated on the field. Guys, speaking of Mason, we want to say congrats to them on receiving the Lone Star Cup trophy. This award goes to the one school in each Texas classification, that's 1A through 6A, that has the most overall athletic success that season. And that was the punchers this time around. Special thanks to Shaylee Edmiston, a student on the yearbook staff at Mason for taking those great photos. Back with more, straight ahead. Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. It is time for our drive of the week. And it's also time to bring in my What's friend up? Tyler Feldman. What's Good up? Good to see. I like the tie. A little floral. Uh, I was running in here, so yeah. I need to catch my breath a little bit. Yeah. I need some flowers to breathe in there to then go. increase my oxygen levels. Stop and smell the roses. Yeah. Time to give you your flowers mm -hmm. along with these teams. <laughs> hey, Tyler, our Johnson High School down in Buda had a big home field advantage tonight when they welcomed a tough Lake Belton team from nearly 90 miles away. Home sweet home. Yeah, the Jags shut out San Antonio Clark last week, but their defense would be tested tonight against the Broncos team featuring five star wideout Micah Hudson. Very, very good at football. Mm -hmm. Let's see if he made plays this evening. Micah Hudson. There he is, one of the top 20 players in all of America. But Johnson has a nice pass game as well. Senior quarterback Carson McMullen found Brian Forsberg for a big catch and run. Now that drive ended with a field goal. This one did not. Cash Robin. Robin doesn't need Batman to cash in on this one. Lake Belton wins this one. Oh, they're going back home with a win, 51 to 44. Crazy game at the Palace tonight. Bowie taking on Cedar Ridge. Opening quarter, opening drive. Bulldogs punting the football. But check this out. Two Raiders collide. Ooh. Fumble. Dogs recover. Then just two plays later, Cruz Tello tells us what's up. Six-yard touchdown, 7 nothing Dogs. Raiders get it right back. First offensive play of the game, Jack Pippen, number wow. 10. Picked off by number 10. Cole James, very next play, Joe Delmark on the mark. Dances eight yards untouched into the end zone. 14 zip buoy. Ensuing Raiders drive. Pippen drops back, gets picked off again by who else? Cole James. <laughs> but then the Dogs turn it over. Tello gets Taken down, ball popped free. David Evangelista Torres scoops it up and takes it all the way back. Someone get me some water. This game is nuts. <laughs> Raiders end up coming all the way back to win a wild one, 24-17. Hey, some scoreboards. Austin achieved the Polar Bears 57 to 12. Big win over East Side. Then Northeast gets shut out by Lempasis, 49 to nothing. More boards. San Antonio Memorial tops Navarro 12 to 7. Then San Antonio Southside sneaks past Cedar Creek 31 24.
More highlights. Lake Travis hosting Steel High School from just outside of San Antonio. And I'm just going to be honest, this was a tough situation for the TV guys. They did all the scoring just before and just after our cameras were there. We did see an interception, though it did not go the way we wanted. And we saw a member of the Steel football team showing us that he's multi-talented. Mm. Look at that. Not just about the blitzes, also about bringing the noise. Good on him. The Cavs win this one. Hey, so good on us. 20 to 10, the final score. Westlake looking to start its season 2-0, hosting Confers Judson. There's Paxton Land, land of the free, home of the brave. Cal living good on the receiving end. Yeah, he, he's living pretty well tonight. 7-0 shafts later. It's Land again, this time finding a wide open Jack Kaiser up the seam. Pretty pump fake there by Land as the shafts land their second one of the season. 47-0 over the Rockets. More scores, more scoreboards. Burn it, the Bulldogs. Wow. Up big on a very good Lano team. Interesting. Burn it up 47 to 6 in the fourth. Uh, we're going to have more later on that. Uh, Brownwood tops Marble Falls 56 to 7. That is a final score there. Hey, it was trash night out of Bible Stadium. Joshua Mann's Rouse Raiders hosting Ed Small and the Anderson Trojans. Second quarter, Trojans down seven. Here's where I introduce you to Ed Small Island. It's anything but small. It's cavernous and comfortable. It's a beautiful place where touchdowns take place. 17-yard score from Brady Gephardt ties the ball game up at 14. Island's always <laughs> perfect for pictures. This play from Anderson right before the half, picture perfect. Gephardt and Small on that island tie. They connect for the second time in the second quarter. But you know what happens on islands, Jeff? Mm. You fall asleep sometimes. Oh. Raiders blank the Trojans in the second half. Big comeback for Rouse, 42-21. They have a pass rusher slash picture taker there? Interesting. They did. Hey, McNeil versus Pflugerville, and the guys from the land of the silent P made some noise. Ryder Miller proving any time can be Miller time. Hashtag not an ad. McNeil has a pair of sophomores who have bright futures. Jaden Schultz to Gerald Gary. That combo got him in the red zone. So why not let that combo finish the drive? All right, now I need to pull out my phone so I can actually read the text and tell you exactly what it says. It said a pretty boring drive that ended up in the end zone. That's what the photographer texted me, and I'm not agreeing to that, but that's exactly what he said. Boring or not, six points to six points. McNeil, strike up the band and celebrate your 2-0 record. The Mavs win by the exciting, not boring score of 44 to 27. Hey, more exciting scores coming your way. Gettings tops Gerald by one touchdown, 49 to 42, the final in that one. And another final down there, not good for the Smithville Tigers. Seeley gets the win, 41 to six. More boards, Columbus. Big win over LaGrange, 63-28. Maynard New Tech falling to Lhasa, 42-13. to All right, tons of scores all yeah. ready for you. And you know what? Every single mm -hmm. Friday, it's more than just the guys on the field and the coaches on the sideline. Let me guess. Tell me. The band? Yes, the <laughs> band. I love the band. I knew it. And I know I knew it. you do too. <laughs> hey, we got to see a very talented, very loud, and very entertaining band from Leander mm -hmm. last week. Take a listen to our band of the week.
Welcome back to Friday Football Fever. Guys, if you were here with us at the beginning of the show, you got to experience something that I have not experienced in my five high school seasons here in Austin. We've never had a game go so late that we weren't able to get our live shot in right after our Game of the Week highlights. That happened today, so we showed you the highlights between Liberty Hill and Hutto. You know that the Panthers came away with their first win of the season, so both of those teams are now one and one. And what you also may know, is that my man Corey Mose was there to get all of the story and all of the interviews right after that game ended. So right now we're going to go to Corey and hear more about what happened in that Dripping Springs and Huddle game. And I see Corey is waving somebody over right now. This is just perfect timing. Let's hear from you, Corey. What's going on? Ending. 82. It's 82 to 80. Liberty Hill takes the dub. I'm joined by Coach Walker right now. Noah, let me get you over here as well. Oh my goodness. First off, how's, how's the breath? How's your stamina? Oh my goodness, there's a track beat out here today. What's going on? Uh, it was a little hot out here. It was a tough game. Um, we were cramping, but you know, that's just that's the toughness in the weight room. You know, that's why we come out here and practice every day. And at the end of the game, you know, that's that's what the score comes down to is the toughness. And as a player where everyone's scoring each possession, what is that like when you know that you gotta score every single time you step on the field? You know, it's tough because I mean you gotta be real confident. You gotta know that you can go take care of business. And offensively we did. And so I'm very proud of the O-line, very proud of the backs. We, we had a great, great offensive game today for sure. And I'll be remiss if I didn't talk about yesterday was this guy's birthday. And so how about a personal birthday present? to yourself over 250 rushing yards almost five touchdowns tonight Somewhere. was that a personal birthday gift to yourself oh i loved it it was a great birthday gift for sure love that yeah, love that the o-line gave me a birthday gift that's exactly right i own well coach let me get you in here just yeah you're good to go coach you came into this game without your starting QB. Then you lose your backup QB in the first half. How were you able to keep your guys focused with the third option at quarterback? It just says a lot about our kids and their character. I, I really don't even, I don't even have the words to explain how proud I am of them right now. It's, it's, it's amazing, you know, uh, to, to go through all that adversity in one game and just to keep going and keep going and keep going. And, and uh, had to move a starter from defense to offense, be quarterback. And, you know, just, just so proud of those kids and their fight tonight. And earlier this week, I talked to you you said y'all had a lot of work to do after the week one, and you wanted to see how your team responded. How is this for a response? Oh, you know, wins a win. Um, you know, wins a win. I just I hate the 80 points that we gave up tonight. You know, defensively, and, and we've got a lot of work to do on that side of the ball. But so proud of our offense and what they did tonight. It was it was, it was good stuff. Well, thank you, Coach. Congratulations on the win. Uh, go get some sleep tonight. <laughs> a lot of points scored here tonight at Liberty Hill, but it was a sensational game. Maybe the game of the year. We'll see. I'm going to toss it back out to you, Jeff. Not the game of the year if you're a defensive coordinator, huh? 82 to 80. Wow. Impressive, impressive score and an amazing finish that I'm sure we'll talk about for a while. Hey, let's get you some more scores right here. Uh, if you add all those up, you might not get, yeah, you, you barely get 82, but that's okay. Hey, Taylor beat Rockdale, or they're up on Rockdale 17 to zero in the second half of that game. And Canyon Lake is up on Fredericksburg right now. We hope the Billies can battle back. 45-43 in the fourth quarter. More scores for you. Lago Vista, the Vikings fall to Little River Academy. The Bumblebees, I believe, is their mm. mascot. 27-24. Mm. to 24. That game is final and a one-point game. Florence, the Buffaloes fall to Bruceville Edie in that one. Hey, the scores keep on coming. Uh, Lexington, one-point loss against Troy, 22-21, to and Regents remains perfect. They have a quarterback, a sophomore with D1 offers. Regents, the Knights, look poised for another deep playoff run. They win this one 42-23. to Lexington actually had a chance to win it five seconds left. 45-yard mm -hmm. field goal just came up short, oh. and that's how that game ended. So a close one for the Eagles. Drama, drama, mm -hmm. drama all over Central Texas. Highlights, highlights, highlights right. coming at you right now. Hey, the guys at Wimberley are fresh off of a trip to the state championship game. And though they had to travel down to San Antonio for week two, they did enter tonight's game against Piper High School with a lot of confidence and a ton of momentum. Ah, uh, Jeff, there's nothing quite like Texans football, right? That is right, and we're watching the Texans play some football right now. Wimberley opened the game on the right track with a sack against a really tall quarterback. Got to get a birth certificate on that guy, make sure he's on the up and up. Next, a nice strong touchdown run from senior Owen O'Neill. Owen let the guys to a win. Texans take this one 44 to 6. The Dragons of Round Rock looking to breathe fire tonight against the Reagan Rattlers. Cole Pryor had 
prior ideas, however. Dives into the end zone for the touchdown. Dragons fly back, though. Mason Cochran, play action, rolls left, throws on the run, hooks up with Mark Hiromuro. Mm. He could go all the way. Down at the <laughs> one-yard line, that sets up this botch snap with the side of Mason Cochran recovery. Touchdown, Dragons. They were up 28-27 in the fourth. Rattlers provide some late sting, though. They get the win, 35-28. Mm. Going back to San Antonio with the win. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't feel great about it, Jeff. You know, no, you know, I think At all. the people might actually feel a little better about uh, coming away with something free. How about uh, that? Free stuff. It's t-shirt time. And Tyler, look at this, a brand new t-shirt that the people can have. The, the new edition, the fresh 2023 Friday Football Fever t-shirts. What we'll do, Tyler, do you mind taking a picture for me real it's quick? It's a really good t-shirt. It's a really good t-shirt. And I hope we take a really good picture right here. A little portrait mode, have to huh? step back. Oh yeah, that's that's a smile, the Jeff Jones signature. I feel like that's gonna be a good back one. on cam. Guys, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna well, what I'm you. gonna do is I'm gonna post this on my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. All of them are at Jeff Jones Sports. Go ahead and follow me on that uh, page, and then leave a comment under this picture. And at random, I'll pick one, maybe two people per platform, and send you a free T-shirt in your size. How about that? Yeah. Hey, we're coming right back with our Athlete of the Week and our Player of the Week nominees. Well, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. We want to show our Athlete of the Week winner, uh, Jax Brown from Weiss High School, balled out against the LBJ during our Thursday night broadcast. The Gunslinger gave out four touchdown passes en route to a dominant 44-19 win over uh, the, LBJ Pan the LBJ Jaguars. He completed 17 of his 25 passes for 241 yards. Now, a year ago, he tore his ACL. We are glad to see him back and better than ever. Um, again, that is our Abacus Athlete of the Week. We'll be right back with our Big Save nominees.
Everybody, it's time to show you the nominees for our Austin Telco Big Save of the Week. We start with a play from our KVU Thursday night live stream. Weiss running back Braden Woolley can officially change his name to the quickest feet in Pflugerville. Both feet in Pflugerville start with a P in this case. Braden's 32-yard score with the first trip to the end zone for Weiss, but it would not be the last. The Wolves are out to a 2-0 start, thanks in part to plays just like that one. And Jeff, I know you love defense, so I know you'll love this play. Jackson Yanuzzi, Malik Cousin, they team up for the TFL. Ball pops free. David Evangelista Torres popped into the picture, picks up the football, scampers back for the touchdown. The Raiders come all the way back from 14 down to beat Bowie 24-17. What up, cuz? Hey, <laughs> last up to the Hutto Hippos. And the only thing I like more than this play design is the execution. Will Hammond to Alex Green to Keelan Chavis, the hook and ladder to perfection just before the half. Hip, hip, hippo. Hey, now that you've seen the nominees, it's time for you to vote and let us know your fit. You like that one, huh? I always, I, you can say hello to me and I'll laugh. I appreciate it. Hey, I'll post the poll on my Twitter page. We'll see you next time. Let's go. I put the city on top of my back. And it went way, way, way up. Like the D-line, I just go for my set. Better be having they weighed up. We the ones turning it up to the mix. All that hate came days up. Cause we went way, way, way up. Now we just way, way, way up. Mode always activated. Took a minute to recalibrate it. People looking at me agitated. Really act like they ain't glad I made it. I ain't looking for congratulations. Never thrived on their validation. Just show respect and some admiration. Cause I'm the GOAT. No fabrication.